Hello, I am the Irish guy, and Newcastle United's takeover was one of the craziest mic drops in Premier League history. But lads, the takeover was actually mooted years before it actually happened. And now, we are three years deep into this crazy reality where Mike Ashley has been banished back to Greg's, and Newcastle actually have mega rich owners. What? I think it's also established that I have chicken wedges in my brain because 18 months before the crazy takeover went through, I made a video predicting Newcastle United squad what it would look like by now post the takeover. And oh lads, I'm actually scared to look. Let's just see. Let's just see who I thought Newcastle would buy. Right, let's go. Goalkeeper, wait, check Chesney. Usually an incoming manager likes his own goalkeeper. If it is to be Allegri, like the newspapers are saying, dragging in his former Juventus number one, wait, check Chesney. Yeah. I really thought that Wojciech Chesney would be the Newcastle United goalkeeper by now. Why? Is it, is it just because he was already playing alongside teammates dressed in black and white? He has since seen a luxuriously lucrative move to Al Nasser breakdown. He's 34 years old and was going to be offered a £16 million annual salary. So not only have Juventus ruined his life by failing to agree a transfer fee, but they've already replaced him with Monza's goalie, Mikel de Gregorio. So right now, Chesney has been ramsdaled. This is a former Brentford goalkeeper who's going to be treated like a king. He and his missus were probably already looking forward to double dates at Ronaldo's house. But now, he's desperately trying to squeeze himself of a late slum remove to Marseille, where he'd probably have to wade through angry feminists camped out in the car park. Goalkeeper Freddie Woodman. Yeah, one of the few players to survive this financial makeover. Good old Freddie Woodman. In two years, he'll be a 25-year-old World Cup winner. Sit on a bench and learn from Chesney. Oh no. For all the players to survive a mega money takeover, I actually thought that Freddie Woodman would be the last man standing. It's a bit like in any given horror film, tipping the dog to make it through to the end. Now, you know the director is going to make the zombie bite off its head within the first 20 minutes of the film. Woodman is 27 years old at Preston North End and will probably never play a Premier League minute ever again. Goalkeeper Willie Caballero, a 40 year old third choice goalie, arguably the easiest job in world football. Willy Caballero is 42. Look, he did have one transfer left in him after quitting Chelsea, but it was to Southampton, where he made about as much impact as a pregnant toad. He's now, strangely, Chelsea assistant manager? Oh, let's be honest, considering he looks like Enzo Moresca's twin, the blue could realistically push his gaffer into a crocodile swamp, put on his clothes, and nobody's gonna tell the difference. Right back, Kyle Walker. Why do I have a feeling that Kyle Walker's career is about to get stopped in a bit? My prediction, his international career is now lying face down in a ditch, while Pep will probably ship him out of city three weeks after his 30th birthday. Walker has said he'd rather live in the north of England to be close to his family in Sheffield. So yeah, from one fat oil paycheck to the next. Stuffed in a bin. Since this video was published, Kyle Walker has lifted four Premier League titles in a row, including one as literal captain of the club. He's won the actual treble and FIFA Club World Cup. This guy has played in two consecutive finals of the European Championships in England. The guy has surpassed 300 games for Man City. He's closing in on 100 caps. Is that? Is that what I meant by shoving his career in a bin? To think he'd have chosen to join Newcastle United. Sounds absolutely wacky, but... But, 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 I had the jigsaw puzzles in my brain because, lads, Kyle Walker and Kieran Trippier's careers have been intertwined forever. They're almost joined at the hip. They have very similar lives because Trippier is also a top England international right back who's also been at Man City and Spurs. He's also been to two Euros finals with England. And apparently both Walker and Trippier, their marriages are crumbling at the exact same moment. Oh, yeah. And they were both headhunted by Bayern Munich last season. I said that Walker wanted to live in the North to be close to his family in Sheffield. Yeah, Shapiro's got family in Bury. That's why he left Spain. So the Magpies managing to steal him out of Atletico Madrid when they were 19th in the league. That was actually almost as insane as if they were to sign Walker. So no, I was wrong, but I got the fundamental clues right. I'm like that boring Bintoff's long legs. Right back, Mattia De Siglio. Hmm, let's see. A backup right back to World of Edge at Newcastle. I'm guessing Kieran Trippier would probably start bleeding from the face if he was offered the chance to bundle Kyle Walker at a third goddamn team. Those two lads are probably sick to the sight of each other. Let's say an old Allegri favourite of both AC Milan and Juventus, Mattia De Siglio. I even mentioned Kieran Trippier in this actual video. I just mentioned the possibility of Trippier joining Newcastle. The answer was staring at me in the face and I said no. Oh, I'd really be bad at Scooby-Doo. It's funny, Mattia De Siglio is a name I have not thought of for years. Remember when he was a completely in fashion right back when he was jumping between AC Milan and Juventus? He was a supremely talented world star, right? Yeah, his career has since fallen off a cliff. He's only played for Italy once since 2019. He's since had a pretty boring loan spell at Lyon. Only represented Juventus once last season. 
season has been dropped from the preseason training camp. He's only 31. And yet now clearly as the natural talent of a squash banana pie, I was very, very wrong. Right back, Jimmy Sterry. We're just going to have to accept it, lads. Jimmy Sterry is here to stay. Jamie Sterry was released two months after I made this video. You literally can't make it up. I said he's here to stay long term. No, he's since joined South Shields, Hartlepool and Doncaster. He's only 28 years old and probably gets paid in dirty Lunchables. Send it back, Phil Jones. Lads, take what you can get. Phil Jones is retired. I mean, I, I assume. I think the bloke is too embarrassed to publicly announce it. Because this is someone who clearly had enough pride left to refuse Rafa Varane's number four shirt when he rocked up at Old Trafford three years ago. But PJ is literally still at Old Trafford. He hasn't left. And he's a 32-year-old coach. Jones would have been a completely hopeless signing for Newcastle. Center back John Stones. Yeah, there we go. Big money defensive signing. Like Kyle Walker, I have a feeling John Stones is soon to be getting punted out of Man City. I know Pep Guardiola likes a player to take risks, but even he must be getting frustrated with his £50 million defender. A talented player, yes, but half the time. I'm convinced he has a family of cartoon mice controlling the levers in his head. Get this guy a £50 million move to St. James's Park. A stadium which specialises in big money defensive clowns. Four Premier League titles and a treble. I really spoke about John Stones whilst comparing him to a big money defensive clown. Those were the words I used. Lads, I know this video came out at the beginning of lockdown, but had I just spent that morning eating poisoned earwax I bought off the internet? Stones is absolute top class. A Rolls Royce centre back, and here was me comparing him to Boomsong. Someone who really was an embarrassing meatloaf sandwich in public football. I really thought that Newcastle's centre back partnership after the takeover would be Jones and Stones. What is this, Sesame Street? Centre back, Fabian Sharp. But by 2022, it'll be old news. At 30 years of age, the guy will be firmly stopped on the bench, edging towards the exit. No, since the takeover, Fabian Schaar has barely missed a match. Centre back, Leonardo Benucci. I'm guessing Allegri is going to want an experienced, reliable head to, to sit on the bench. Wow, wow, wow. Leonardo Benucci would have been a Newcastle United flop. Because this man clearly can't hack it outside of Juventus. I mean, outside of Barry and Juve, he has failed to make an impact literally everywhere else in his, in his career. A completely anonymous cheesecake at both Inter and AC Milan. He's had brief, disappointing spells at Union Berlin and Fenerbahce. He is a troublesome headache of a man. He's someone who literally brought Juve to court when he left. So me tipping a struggling Newcastle to get their hands on his argument to the fella and think that it will go well. Now, it would be a bit like me tipping my mom to go on a lunch date with the Grim Reaper. What was I thinking? Left back Lucas Dina. Uh, Lucas Dina is arguably the best left back outside the top six. He has an expert delivery from free kicks. In 2022, he'll be 28 years of age in his prime. Perfect. Get him in at left back. Well... Newcastle did try. Newcastle tried to sign Luca Dina from Everton. He said no because he didn't want to get involved in a relegation scrap. So he goes to Aston Villa instead. Meaning Newcastle had to settle for back target instead. Before realising that his limbs are made of butter. And so now it's just big old gruesome Dan Byrne. Send him a deal, Jack Grealish. I wouldn't be a fan. Welcome to Newcastle. Oh, let's hope not. You know what? I bet if you offer this transfer to Jack Grealish now, he would buy it off your hand. At the time of recording, this man was still an Aston Villa player. I did not think over a year after I made this video, he would literally become the most expensive British footballer of all time, joining Man City in a £100 million deal. He has literally won the treble since, and three Premier League titles, and gets paid £300,000 a week, which is so sickening, I almost feel my tonsils dissolving in my mouth. Sending a field at Tour of Adele. Yeah, he's nearly 33 and over the hill, lads. But remember a big Big money Man City. Roberto Mancini was forced to drag in a 33-year-old Patrick Vieira from old club Inter Milan purely for experience. I feel like my head is going to explode. Arturo Vidal's career was about to be destroyed forever because just a few months after I made this video, Barcelona were playing against Bayern Munich in the Champions League and this Barca midfield star preempted fate by telling the press this. Bayern will be playing against the best team in the world, Barca. Barca lost a two. He uh, never played for Barcelona ever again. As everyone could see, he was now just a soggy bag of potatoes with a mouth and he was immediately flushed out the door to Inter Milan and he since played for Flamengo and Atletico Paranense back in Brazil and is now 37 years old and on the books of Colo Colo in Chile. Ah, uh, God. This, this, is, this must be the worst shout. Surely there can't be worse than this. Center midfield, Martin Odegaard. Odegaard will be sold. Why not a big money move to ambitious Newcastle? 
Can you imagine? Can you imagine if Newcastle had got their paws on Martin Odegaard? But now he has since left the Real Madrid wilderness to establish himself as another Arsenal midfield star. He is currently the second coming of Cesc Fabregas because he is the captain at the Emirates now, which on paper does look a bit strange because he still just reminds me of that shy teenage boy who'd probably start blushing at home and ask him for the time. Though Newcastle didn't sign him, but they did go out there and get Bruno Gamaris instead, who let's be honest is practically just as good. Centre midfield, Manny Longstaff. It's Matt. When I made this video, the narrative was... Oh, how are Newcastle going to cling on to Manny Longstaff when you and are trying to bring him to Italy? Yeah, he's now 24, since being released by the Magpies, and now plays in Canada with Toronto. Yeah, I know Jermaine Defoe got a lot of attention 10 years ago, I don't think Drake has been in touch. I don't think he wants to bring Maddie Longstaff up for Burger King meals. Forward Jaden Sancho. Did I not think that FFP was a thing? What? That's here is me thinking that Chesney, Grealish, Odegaard, Sancho, Walker, and Stones would all be under the same umbrella at Newcastle United. Yeah, their current wages per week are 194,000, 300,000, 240,000, 250,000, 175,000, and 250,000. Even Benucci at Juventus was earning close to 200k a week as well. Yeah, um, in reality, Newcastle's highest wage earner, it's 160k a week. I mean, forget about those superstars. After a big, monstrous, earth-shattering takeover, Newcastle's second best paid footballer is Lloyd Kelly. What? Yeah, 150k a week. For a centre back who at the time of making this video was about to be relegated to the championship. How? How did I think that Newcastle would be able to afford all these guys? I mean, Sancho, he has since joined Manchester United, where he's been a rotten flea bag who's taken a big backward step in his career, but even still, he's still getting linked with the move to PSG. Newcastle instead uh, are picking Jacob Murphy on the wing. What? Forward Federico Bernadeschi. Yep, another signing with Messi, but I like where he stamped all over it. Federico Bernadeschi, a top attacking wide player for Juventus. I can see Allegri dragging him in on a cup price deal in 2022. This was such a disgustingly hipster shout. I feel so disappointed in myself. Although, you know what's viciously creepy? I tipped both Mario Longstaff and Federico Bernadeschi to be teammates by now, right? They are. They both are at Toronto FC. Yes, Bernadeschi, a 30-year-old winger with nearly 200 games for Juventus under his belt. A champion with Italy at Euro 2020. He's now chilling with Longstaff in Canada. I must be the only person in the world who successfully predicted that these two will be teammates one day. Striker Luka Jovic. Listen, the Newcastle owner's first port of call will be a big money striker, no doubt about that. Jovic, 40 million pounds should do it. No, next. Striker, Ayote Perez. When Newcastle inevitably overtake Leicester, do you reckon they want to come back? No, Perez never came back to the Prem. But to be fair, despite being a Real Batiste in Spain, he's literally just lifted Euro 2020 forward Spain. So did Hosolu, just <laughs> bizarre. Striker, Troy Powers. Someone let Troy Powers realize his potential. Don't let him be a damn squib who peaked in youth football. It's my only ray of hope for the Ireland team. A budding future number nine. Learning his trade at St. James's Park. Go on, Troy. Future Robbie Keane. Since making this video, Troy Powered has flopped on loan at Millwall, Ipswich, MK Dons, Preston, and has now wrapped up an incredibly weird permanent move to AZ Alkmaar. This was another awful shout. This was a terrible squad. <sighs> yeah, so that's it. This prediction video was ridiculous. How stupid was I in 2012? Oh, I clearly had no grasp or understanding of FFP restrictions. How on earth did I think all these guys would join Newcastle the minute they got a takeover? Thankfully, Newcastle did not listen to me. I mean, apart from the likes of Walker and Stones, pretty much every other transfer I mentioned, those players, their careers took a nosedive. I mean, Grealish and Sancho don't even make the England squad anymore. Thankfully, Newcastle did not listen to this gargoyle because instead of buying smart, sensible signings, which they have done, I was just chasing a bunch of random mercenaries. This was absolutely stupid. Anyway, that's the end of what I... Oh, I talked shit a while. Stupid!